I was a reporter in Alpha City, a city full of superheroes in a universe full of miracles. I watched my city and told the stories that happened there, even watching the universe end there. I saw realities appear and vanish over and over again until my world, my city, somehow returned. I don't know where I am, but I know I can still watch my city and still tell its stories. My name is Craig Allen, and this is Alpha City News. I see the city spread before me, neighborhood by neighborhood. Red Bank, Far Side, Battle Hill, the Yards, Dockland, Floptown, Bakersley, Easterside, Carbondale Street, Kirby Park, Absinthe Avenue, the Bloody Red Acre, University Square, the Bay, the River, the Mountain, Boulevards crisscrossing back and forth over one another. Monorail and subway lines girding it above and below. Cars fill the roads, people fill the sidewalks, and the city pulses with life. Five million people sleeping and dreaming, waking and thinking, living and dying. And above them, a single figure in crimson and gold falls out of the sky landing between a small girl and the grill of a car seconds before they meet in a terrible moment of destruction. She was called Radiant, and she was. She leapt across the world, a cardinal blur, stopping a crime spree, an accident, death intended or un, an active force for all that was good. The human race was captivated and a flame was lit. Those who followed, Jackie Quick, the Bright Man, Empyrean, the first son of Atlantis, the tracker from Titan, Mechanical Bill, they fanned the flame into an inferno, spreading the age of heroes over the entire world and beyond. The heroic union they formed would, in time, become legend. But the first, and for a time only, hero was Radiant, the sole paragon lifting humanity's eyes to the bright future. I see her standing in scarlet costume between child and oncoming death. From her outthrust hands, a web of energy spreads. Even where I am, standing between seconds of time in a world of statues, her web spreads faster than my eye can follow, spreading over the onrushing car, past it, to engulf all the vehicles which might be affected by the sudden removal of momentum needed to save the child. Five cars and the people in them find themselves suddenly motionless. Time begins to move again. A mother rushes to embrace her child, and Radiant comforts both, patting the child's head, reassuring the mother, apologizing to the perplexed drivers, and then leaping skyward, searching for the next situation that might need her presence. As my eyes follow her into the sky, I perceive what might be an afterimage of her movements left behind, leading back from the sky to where she had stood to save the child, and up again into the air. I follow it backwards, back through time, moving along the track, seeing a litany of lives saved and good done to a moment earlier in the day when she seemed to appear from nowhere above the center of the city. As I study the ghostly image, though, I perceive that her path continues still backwards, having leapt into the sky an instant from an apartment near Eisner University. Her name is Amanda Brown, Dr. Amanda Brown. She teaches various classes involving the science of the human brain at Eisner University and is known in the field for her somewhat eccentric theories. She is a careful teacher and a conscientious scientist, and she doesn't really understand what has happened to her. 
Dr. Brown knows that she has made a breakthrough in her study of how the human brain interacts with the rest of the universe, and she believes that she has somehow learned to channel a universal force, a power that has been influenced by her wish to better the world. Dr. Brown thinks that Radiant is something separate from her, a being that uses the Doctor as a conduit to enter our world. Dr. Brown is wrong. For more than half a year, Radiant is alone in the skies of Earth, covering the globe in her quest to help people with her considerable abilities. The world seems to hold its breath during this time, waiting to see if this impossible woman will turn out to be a trick, a hoax, a marketing ploy to sell soda or blue jeans, or maybe something real. Professor Silva Plana Engadi styled himself Professor Zarathustra and named his followers the Army of the Last Men. The professor believed that the appearance of Radiant marked the end of mankind as the masters of the earth and that the coming superhumanity would take its rightful place ruling the mass of undermen. To force the issue, the professor and his followers took control of the Alpha City nuclear power facility calling on Radiant to proclaim herself mistress of the new world. The professor's intent was to secure a place for himself and his followers in the new hierarchy he saw coming. Though if Radiant refused his call to power, he would be content to become a martyr to his cause, destroying all of Alpha City and proclaiming the ruins to be the tombstone of mere humanity. That Radiant would find her own solution hadn't occurred to the professor. The Army of the Last Men proved unable to stand even against conventional police forces, and the device that was to set the destruction of Alpha City in motion was stopped by Radiant with almost insulting ease. When Radiant and the Professor faced one another, though, the true battle began. Unknown even to himself, Professor Zarathustra was more than human. He had collected his cadre of followers not through the use of inarguably correct rhetoric, but through mental subjugation, using unguessed at psychic abilities to bend the will of those whose minds surrounded him. Faced with his harbinger of superhumanity, Professor Zarathustra attempted to break Radiant's will as he had the others before her painting a picture of the glorious and monstrous world that would emerge from the ascension of mankind's successors, a world where new planes of reality would open and be fertilized by the bodies of the dead gods and the dross of mankind, where the Professor and Radiant and their inevitable compatriots could ride roughshod over the rules and mores of the world that had come before. A world where the strong did as they wished, and where the weak were thankful simply to be allowed to live and serve. Radiant's refusal shocked the professor to his core, but it was her reasoning that sent Zarathustra spiraling into madness. No, Radiant said. No, professor, your vision of a new world, a world of power-mad bullies, this vision is too small. No, Professor, the magic and horror of the real world already dwarf your sad imaginings, and I won't be part of something so tiny. For the people of Earth, it was as though a dam had burst. All over the world, heroes and villains appeared, bringing strangeness and wonder to daily life which had heretofore only existed in dreams. Men and women from every country seemed to find in themselves the capacity to become something greater and more terrible than they had ever imagined. And Radiant was at their forefront. The people of Atlantis, long thought only a myth, made their presence known, and their first son became as much a hero to the surface world as he was to the undersea kingdom. The tracker from Titan appeared, shocking the world with news that some of humanity's lost cousin... The Neanderthals had managed to leave the planet long ago and establish a colony on the harsh moon that orbited Saturn. Anders Breitman, the Bright Man, stepped forward and used his world-girdling corporation to curb the excesses of man's science and to help bring balance between nature and humanity, adding his physical prowess and genius to the fight against evil. Jackie Quick raced over the face of the world, shattering what man thought he knew about the limits of the human body with her incredible speed. 
Empyrean used her powers given by the old gods to preserve the safety of the planet from strange threats. Radiant still leads the way, standing as a paragon of heroism for those who came after her, fighting human criminals, leading the mass of superhumanity to defeat the invasion of Abaddon, who used the corpse of the dead anti-god Abraxas as his home, journeying to the past and future to safeguard the present, she never faltered in her devotion to protecting her people from whatever might threaten. In time, Amanda Brown learned that Radiant, far from being a separate person who was summoned from beyond, was in fact Dr. Brown herself, perfected by the understanding she achieved through her researches. Eventually, before leaving Earth forever on an unknown quest, she managed to codify her experience in a way that would allow others to follow in her footsteps. In time, measured not in years but in centuries, the radiant path would lead all of humanity to personal transcendence. But this was far in the future. For today, in this new world of time travel and rocket-powered apes, she stands as the first among equals, holding up the lantern of understanding as humanity moves into the darkness of the future. This has been Alpha City News with Craig Allen, written and produced by Carter Lee, sound beds provided by Acidus, A-S-I-D-U-S, and you can find him on SoundCloud. If you want to contact us, you can reach us at alphacitynews at gmail.com or at rhymeswithgeek.com. Thanks a lot.